Hello, my name is John Kenalopoulos. I'm a cornea external disease specialist and I would like to show you the use of the Artisan or Verisize Aphakia in tracheal lens in combination with penetrating keroplasty and severe lens subluxation and cataract extraction here. We're watching a routine penetrating keroplasty, tree finding the donor cornea with the HANA disposable tree fine going on to a failed graft with a anterior chamber and tracheal lens to ascertain the geometric center of the cornea. As you can see here, the previous graft was placed quite eccentrically. And here we were using the host part of the HANA tree fine to establish trephination of the uh, patient's uh, cornea. We're placing a viscoelastic into the anterior chamber, completing our trephination with uh, cornea scissors. As you can see, our trephination here is placed more centrally towards the cornea center. Removal of the failed graft, and now we can see the anterior chamber and tracheal lens. This part this haptic is removed freely, the other one is embedded into the angle. We're amputating that haptic. We're fishing into the angle to remove part of that haptic that has remained. As you can see here, there's significant synechia between this haptic, the iris, and the cornea, possibly contributing to the graft failure. We can see vitreous present now. A anterior vitrectomy is performed to remove any sign of vitreous from our pupillary diaphragm. We're evaluating this fibrotic membrane to see if there is space to place a posterior chamber and tracheal lens, possibly uh, in a somerine ring. The actual support is not enough. And here we're lysing the synechiae between the iris and the cornea and we're performing a gonioplasty as you can see here we're going to pull back very gently the synechia of the iris and the peripheral cornea in order to maximize the outflow that this patient can have and here we're going to place the artisan or verisize a fakia lens over the iris and fix it into position and clave it with the special enclavation needles as you can see here. So the uh, iris is pushed through the claws, the haptics of this lens, secure into place. This lens is well centered towards the geometric center of the pupil and now the donor cornea that we had previously trefined is sutured into place our first and second cardinal sutures seen here. We're seeing the six o'clock suture placed now. We're obviously looking at the surgeon's view. The fourth cardinal suture is placed here. The artisan lens uh, gives the ability in these patients, we have published our experience be prior in the Journal of Cornea. Here we're seeing the 16 completed interrupted sutures. All knots are buried. Uh, I was saying that the artisan lens gives the ability of a deeper chamber. You can see the patient here a week postoperatively with a deep chamber, a lens flush with the iris away from the donor cornea, maximizing the possibility of graft survival. Here we're seeing another case of severely subluxated lens that has developed to a cataract secondary to an old accident. We are going to remove this lens via an extracapsular cataract extraction procedure. The patient is treated here under general anesthesia. We're performing our conjunctival pyridomy, a uh, large cornea sclera incision. We're measuring 11 millimeters here. We're trying to establish a large cornea sclera lip in order to minimize postoperative astigmatism and increase, maximize the seal that the opposition of the uh, incision will have postoperatively. As you can see here, we're creating a large cornea scleral lip, at least three millimeters, 
with the crescent blade and now with the keratome entering the anterior chamber. Most of this lens is subluxated and the decision was taken to remove the lens in the intracap fashion rather than try and place a fixation ring. The lens is, plate is now grabbed with the surgical loop and a Sinsky hook and removed in an intracap fashion as seen here. Several sutures are placed to reestablish the integrity of the globe. Fortunately, the uh, preparation of the incision seen previously will make very few sutures necessary to get a, a very good watertight wound. Specifically, only seven sutures will be used eventually. Special attention is taken not to create significant astigmatism by tightening the wounds. We have placed some kenalog into the posterior chamber in order to perform a uh, anterior vitrectomy. The kenalog will help with uh, making uh, loose vitreous readily vis visualized by the surgeon. We're going into the periphery here to remove the remnants of uh, the capsule and some uh, cortical remnants. We're placing myocol into the anterior chamber to attain meiosis. You can see the pupil coming down. A posterior intraocular lens could be sutured in place in a case like this. Over the last years, we have opted to place a artisan Verisize aphakia lens, as you can see here, due to the fact that uh, this placement is uh, a much easier surgical procedure. Also, the lens can be readily visualized in the postoperative care, and there is no risk of um, corrosion of the uh, proline sutures used in a sclerofixated posterior chamber lens in the future. We're placing um, Helon GV in the anterior chamber and now enclaving the iris with the enclavation needle seen here through the lens claws, the lens haptic, first on our left and now on our right. Special attention is taken to centralize the lens. This is done completely manually by the surgeon. The vitrector is used to perform a um, peripheral iridectomy in order to avoid pupillary block and the uh, cornea scleral incision used for the removal of the cataract is completed here. As I mentioned previously, a total of uh, seven sutures is used. We're placing intravitreal kenalog here through the incision and through the iridectomy in order to avoid the chance of uh, cystoid edema and now with the cautery we are bringing back the conjunctiva and completing the procedure. So a iris fixated artisan or verisized lens, the patient postoperative at week one, seen here, with vision 2040, uncorrected. Thank you very much for watching this video.